Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners, and in this video, we'll look at how to make each of our flex items the same width in CSS Flexbox. For this example, I've created a simple flex container that's 1000 pixels wide by 700 pixels high. Inside it, I've created three child flex items, each with a different starting width. When working in the default row flex direction, the width of our flex items is initially based upon the content they contain. In this example, my flex items match the width of the text inside them, with item 1 the narrowest and item 3 the widest. If we wanted these three items to be equal widths, but without filling the total width of the parent flex container, we could simply give each a specified width in the CSS. In my example here, each of my flex items has a class of flex item. So over in my CSS, if we target that class of flex item and give each a width of 200 pixels. Now, regardless of their starting width, each item is 200 pixels wide and will still be able to shrink down in size if the width of the parent flex container becomes narrower. Instead, if we wanted our items to be equal widths and to fill the parent container, there are several methods we could use to achieve this. First, we could use percentage values. Percentages are always in relation to another element, which in this case is the parent flex container. We could use a formula where we give each flex item a width, so instead of 200 pixels, we give it a width of calc, which is a formula and we can use 100% divided by 3. This sets the width of each item to one third of the parent container. 100% refers to the full width of the container, and each item is given a width equal to the sum of 100% divided by 3, or one third. The main drawback with this method is that if we added in additional flex items, we'd need to update the formula each time. For example, if we had five flex items instead of three, we'd need to change the formula to calc 100% divided by five instead of divided by three. Flexbox is designed to be flexible, and this particular method is quite inflexible. Instead of using a formula for the width value, we could instead simply apply a width of 100%. This may sound strange, as we're telling each item to be the full width of the parent container, but because of the way Flexbox works in a single row layout, the items will shrink down in size to fit along the row, making each of them end up the same size. So we're telling each one to be 100% of the width of the container, but because it can't be 100%, it shrinks down so that all three are even sizes. While our previous methods worked, the recommended way to do this would be to use Flexbox specific properties. Let's remove our width value of 100% so that our layout returns to default and quickly look at these different Flexbox properties in turn. To make our items expand to fill the width of the parent container, we need to use the flex grow property. FlexGrow takes all of the available free space inside the container, so this gray area here, and shares it out among the flex items to increase their width. By default, FlexGrow has a value of zero, which means items are not allowed to grow. If we give each item a FlexGrow value of one, the free space will be distributed evenly to each of them so that they all grow by the same amount. As we can see, there's no free space remaining inside our parent container and our items have all increased in width. The problem with this is that because our flex items started out at different widths, they will also end up at different widths. Item one started as the narrowest and ends as the narrowest with item three remaining as the widest. So in other words, our three items are not equal widths. To fix this and make our flex items equal widths, we need to use the flex basis property. 
Flex Basis sets the initial starting width of our flex items before Flex Grow is applied. By default, Flex Basis is set to Auto, which means that our items are as wide as the content they contain. If we change the Flex Basis value here in our CSS to zero, the width of the content is ignored and all items start at the same width of zero. Because they all started at the same width, and then they expand by an equal amount because of the flex grow value, they end up as equal widths. Using both the flex grow and flex basis properties may seem like more effort than simply giving each item a width of 100%. Thankfully, the flex shorthand property combines these values for us, making this whole process a lot simpler. Flex is shorthand for the flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis properties. In order to create equal width flex items that combine to fill the width of the parent container, the recommended method is using a flex value of one. So here in my CSS, rather than using flex grow and flex basis, we'll simply use the flex shorthand property with a value of one. When providing a single unitless value, such as one, we're only supplying the flex grow value. So in other words, this is setting flex grow to one, which is just like we did in the previous example. However, at the same time, flex shrink is assumed to be one, which allows our flex items to shrink down in size so that they don't overflow the container. And also flex basis is assumed to be zero. As we saw in the previous example, this gives all of our items an initial starting width of zero, which means that they expand to equal widths. As we can see, this single line of code, flex one, allows our flex items to expand and fill the width of the container, and each item is the same width. I think that just about covers the basics of making Flexbox items the same width. As we can see, there are a few different ways to achieve this, but the simplest and most recommended method is to use the flex shorthand property with a value of one. The way this works can be a bit confusing. So if you're not quite sure what the flex grow and flex basis properties are doing, please check out my other videos on these topics, which I'll link to in the description below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.